Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing one day all gone. Man, hey man, we got hey, we got a special guest in here today. Yes, um sir. she's a, a OG. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> she a OG in the game. You know, you you all you young girls better sit around and watch the day. A young OG. Yeah, she young OG. She OG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's some OGs in the game that's young, you know, and, and she's one of them, man. Um been doing this how many years now? I all Since her life. She was four. Yeah, four. From what I check it, man. <laughs> Renetta Spencer is in the building, hey. man. What's going on? Man, nothing much. Blessed to be here. Hey, man. So, yeah, yeah, Renetta Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I done checked everything out on you. I went down that rabbit hole and figured out who you was. I was <laughs> like, I got to figure this out. My wife was the one that she never looks for nobody oh, in her life. You. This is, she has never, ever, ever looked for nobody but mental illness people. Oh, That's all special. she bring on the show. I feel Mental illness. I, if, if it's mental illness, I know that day is her day. And I sit back and we talk about mental illnesses. It's, it's never anything else <laughs> other than music. She don't deal Not with just the music. mental Ill- illness. Oh yeah. I feel okay, it. give I me another one. Special. I've been looking for fitness people too. I have not seen a fitness I person on here. Agreed to come on yet. We had uh, uh, now. You did have the women that uh, was uh, having babies for the white men. Yeah, I got that too. Uh, yeah, the, Wait, uh, the Sur- surrogate. Surrogate. Oh yeah, yeah. I tried that. Yeah. My husband shot me down. Oh, yeah. you asked. Well, that was sixty oh, bands. He, yeah, fifty five bands. Fifty five bands. went up. It's seventy. Oh dang! That nigga didn't want it. He didn't want to do it. My homeboy had to get down. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> when they did it, they said it was 50. And then the other one, because we had two of them came on, the other one had twins. And hers, yeah. Yeah. And oh, she so said they're well. Double? They, not double. I did ask that. We thought not she double. Got the double. It was close to it, but not double. But no. she's like, it's well underpaid because, you know, you're putting your body at risk. Regardless, yeah, that's, yeah, that's whatever. Nigga need to get paid. Yeah, but that's nigga trying something. to get money around this thing, nice. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nigga, nigga gonna try to buy one of them new Bentleys or something. I need that. Yeah, <laughs> down payment on the house. Is <laughs> Check it, man. So, um, Renetta Spencer, man. So you, you know, you, um, I know my wife. You gonna go all the way back and, and you know talk to her? Give her that spiel. I'm ready. <laughs> Tell us about growing up with your dad. Because being Ooh. Ronnie Spencer, the man that he is, and let me tell you, I love his voice. We looked him up and listened Girl, to some music. Girl, I've been music. thinking that nigga was the Isaac Brothers for 15 <laughs> years, nigga. Let's be real. No, no, no. Gonna, we got to get gonna it gonna clear, you, though. I ain't going to lie. Ask her about I that song. Really, I'll say this nigga, is done tri- they done tricked me. It might have been thought, Isley Brothers on there. I, I you don't know the for a fact it was him. I, I, I heard the nigga singing on one day. I said, that was the day I'm Isley Was that him? That's my dad. The whole time. The whole, the whole time. time. I thought they he were wrong eyes, man. Eyes. And I'm the biggest he fan. He sound just like Bro, him. Bro, I'm telling you right now. I'm, I've been in my mind. I'm saying, how the hell Pimp C them, Chad them, no, no damn running spill. I'm not running spill, but Ronald Isley. No, that was my daddy. That's dope, man. I, and, and I'm telling you, I did not realize it because I did not care about nothing but Pimp C. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. I was a Pimp C fan, and then I, I'm still is, but, but it was like <laughs> nothing else really mattered. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but when real. he found that, but when I found he, that, I blew my mind. He had to. He looked up all of Ronnie Spencer's song, and we we comparing voices, trying to figure out if this is really him. Yeah. So he has a song with Ronald Isley. That's dope. Really? And you got to really listen. What's the name of it? <laughs> it's called Hold On. It's not out yet. We are trying to get him to put it out. We trying to get him for like the fall or the winter because the he song needs is real to. mellow. They gonna sound just alike. But you gotta really listen to, to it see which one is who. Yes, yeah, so you'll think confused. it's just Ronald Isley. It's wow, confusing. wow, I got good it. song though. It's a good song. I believe you. Who man. wrote it? So actually, they it was a joint thing. So um, Ronald Isley wrote his verse. Daddy wrote his verse, and then they kind of collabed on the hook. Okay, were you there when they did it? No, I wasn't there. I was Aww. at the babysitter, unfortunately. Aww. Wow! <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to bring me. Wow! But my dad actually went to his house, went to St. Louis, and laid it there with um, D-Rec, No D, Dirty Dollar. How long the whole, ago was like, that? The whole like shop family. I had to be every bit of like ten. 
Yeah. And my daddy just been holding on to that song, holding on to it. Why do why do artists do that? They'll drop something, but don't drop it, but they'll, you know, lay it and then hold on to it for years. I don't know. Well, my daddy was more of like sentimental values, and then they wanted to shoot a video to it too, but then Ronald Osley fell sick. So my dad was like, well, I'm going to just hold on to it until, you know, I talk to his people and it's the right time to put it out. So hopefully it's the right time because I like the song. So going back to being um, Ronnie Spencer's daughter. Tell us about that. My daddy's strict, like big strict. Um, once he found out I wanted to do music, he can't, I can't even describe it. My daddy is one of them people, this is what you want to do, and I start investing my time and my money in it, you better take it seriously, because if you don't, you only get one shot. My daddy's a one-shot type mm. So once I was like, yes, this is what I want to do, voice lessons, opera training, we did ballet, we did dance, we did you said to we, the max. Do you have siblings that did also? Nope, just me and my dad. I'm the only child on my dad's side. Oh. So, yeah, any anything that had to do with, like, music, production, anything to make you better and greater as an artist, I did it. I can imagine how he felt. To know that his child wanted to come up in his shoes. He was happy. I, I can he imagine. He's he's happy. Happy. Can imagine. It was a setup to hold. No, time. I can imagine. It's because you wanted man. to do it. It's not that he was forcing you to do it. It's yeah. different when yeah, I wanted to do it. your child wants to do something that you do and find the love in it compared to you're like, you need to do this because I already paved the way. Right. You need to go ahead and do this with me. And, you know, most kids are like, no, nah, I want to yeah. I want to go here. I want to yeah. do this. I never had man, anything man, else man. I wanted to do. Because, I mean, when growing up in the house, with him, I was around Pimp C, Bum B, Lil Flip, Kiki. I was around them. Pump the brakes. <laughs> you call right them magical there. names. You call them magical names. You That's was right. around Pimp C? Yes. Man, wait a minute. Names. We better stop this whole interview. <laughs> I'm being real with you. He Give me a, a Pimp C story. story. Um, that you can remember. That, yeah, but she, 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 either um, she so did. I'm 28. Uh, so either she yeah. did really or either good. she didn't, man. Either she lying or either she did. I can give you one that I really do remember. Um, yeah, was, you hear what I just said? Either <laughs> she lying or we're going to put on Don't never. I just talked to He's a Leo the other week. Don't do this, man. No, I got you. Um, we went to the zoo. Well, we wasn't supposed to go to the zoo, but we ended up going to the zoo. It was my dad, Pimp C, and then Pimp C's son. Okay. And Pimp C, people think that it's a character. He ain't no character. That's him. That's him all the time. The way he talks in his songs, he talks in real life. Wow. My dad mimics him. So the whole time we at the zoo, Pimp C, Ronnie, look at that bird. My daddy, I see that bird. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> why is he talking like that? But he, he he's not a character. It was all real. Wow. Nothing, he never fake anything. Nothing was for the cameras. And the like, love he has just, for the South, is that's him. Deep like that is. Uh, he don't play by Texas or no. South or period. He don't play. No, and it was even. I like to say that Pimp was kind of like an uncle because my grandmother didn't play about Pimp either. Wow. Like at all, we would go and visit him, Mama West. Like they were family. You talking about when he was on Tarot Unit? Yes. You yes. used to go to the prison yes. to visit. We went to wow. go and visit him. Wow. Well, how was that? Just like going to I mean, what did you, you were just, you, how old was you? You was young. No, I was like, yeah, I was young. I was probably like 10 or 10 11, 11, somewhere in that area. So you just watch. You didn't ever say nothing to him. You like, he, he. No, I go talk to him. Um, was that, was that, was, was that like the visit was, it was just like sitting here. Yeah. Like yeah, my grandmother was, had it to where she could have contact visits yes. with him. So he would sit across the table and then we would sit on the other side, but it wasn't anything like weird or different. Yeah, and that's yeah. so funny. Same. He was a celebrity. There correct, too. correct. Yeah, so, I sure. mean, people were coming to visit and it'd be like, is that pimp? I'll walk up to him and be like, can I just shake your head? My grandmother kind of looked like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm visiting. <laughs> him. Visit, that's right. He would still do it, but wow. pimp is. That's okay, because I know a lot of people. Place yeah, 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 I bet he does. How was that when he passed away for you? Um, Sorry about that, babe. It was unbelievable. Um, Sorry, <laughs> it no, was. Uh, it was. Y you don't. You don't. You couldn't believe it. And then the way that they 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 described it, he was in L.A. Yeah, it was just a shocker because yeah, he was he was great. He was gonna go and do great things. Of course, like he he had the city on his back. 
Yeah, I seen that. We was waiting on him to come home, and he would sit down and tell my grandmother all these big plans. I got this, I got that, I got so many big things to do when I get out. I can't wait till I get out. And then when he finally did, it was like, dang, your time was cut short. Wow. Man, amazing, amazing. You know, like I said, ever since I was young, I, I've been listening to this dude my whole life. Oh, man. Except, for, you know, when he came out, because I think I'm older than him. I really do. Pimp amazing. <laughs> Me and Tupac the same age, so I know I'm probably it's we somewhere along the lines. I met mm -hmm. Bun, but I never got I I seen Pimp C perform, Bun of course. A sweetheart too. Yeah, Bun dope. Yeah, but he he sweet. met all my family, you know. And he was a stand up guy in the midst of it. So mm -hmm. I, I like that, you know. And um, then with your dad taking you down there to see him, you know, while he was in prison. Because a lot of mom people took her. Or mom. Yeah, grandma. my grandma. Yeah. Because a lot of people try not to take their kids to prison to visit because they, they don't want them to see the person behind bars. They want them to rem remember them, you know, when they're out. Right. So how did that situation feel to you? My grandmother was the realest person. And I say that because she taught me reality. She didn't keep nothing from me. It wasn't no, oh, well, these people are going to college for a long time. No. Mm -hmm. The reality is he's a black man. He's incarcerated. This happens. To I'm most black men, right? To go and see what mm -hmm. this is so you won't be dumb in the world because she saw us i'm not gonna be here so i might as well show you the stuff that you know goes on in life while i'm here so when you get up you grow up in the world you'll be like oh my grandmother did prepare me for this mm -hmm. so i mean it wasn't it wasn't nothing of being embarrassed to go and see him or being nervous to go see him it was just a, a reality of it, that this happened mm -hmm. and it happens so right all right okay. yeah so i mean um that that's a that's a hell of a story, you know. I like that. I appreciate that. That does Definitely. something for your boy right there. Uh, <laughs> you hit me right if you ever <laughs> see a lot of our shows, he continuously talks yeah, about yeah. I don't have to. All my guests time. do. No, I don't play. He does. I, my guests do, and all I just, I just, she hate it because she a hater. Because no. No, no, it, it had nothing to do with Pimp C either. This is between me and her. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you know, I get it. You know, yeah, I, I mean, we in Texas. Of course, his name comes up. I just know the history of it, and it just kind of goes a little longer than what you would expect. But yeah, well, let me give you an example. No example. Let me give needed. you an example. Every time we drive in anywhere out of town mm -hmm. on the way back. That's all we listen to okay, is Pimp so. C. And? South. I thought that's I mean, what everybody all, do. And then he will give me the I'm history. of it, so. Yeah. No, he will break it down and give me the history of this Every song, song and why this da 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 and yeah. da da and yeah. yeah, he goes Mine into it. Mine is anthem for me. Like I told my husband when we renew our vows, I want to walk down the aisle to that song. Really? Like I have to. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on that too hard How to swallow all that. So we're coming up on three years. Oh. Yeah. So that's when you plan dope. to renew? We we're thinking about doing it when my daughter turns five. That'll be our five year anniversary. It just mm -hmm. seems right. Yeah. You know, five and then 10, maybe 15. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. It's pretty cool to do a renewal. It yeah, is. So. We just did ours it's last year. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I kind of gave him the side eye. Yeah. Like, Let's just be real from a man's perspective. Me. It's a pretty expensive, I'm expensive deal. I ain't going to lie. Well, it I am too. That's the problem. <laughs> So, well, he should have known what he took on whenever he got sorry, together Daddy, with you. Sorry, watching. It is your fault. So do mm -hmm. you, do, do you, But go ahead. Sorry. But um, I know you talk about, I listened to a couple of your interviews, you talk about your dad a lot. Yeah. Where was your mom? So I've never met my mother. Wow. I've been with my dad since I was about six months old, I was told. Might be younger than that. Um, I just recently met my sister last week for the first time, and then I met my brother three weeks ago for the first time. On your mom's side? Yeah, and I still have one more brother I haven't met. I haven't met any of my grandparents. And then I met my mom's sister like two months ago for the very first time ever. Like, that was her so, first time. Did hugging. she pass away or something? My mom's still alive. Um, she moved from Ohio. She's now currently, I believe, in Indianapolis, I think was the last time I talked to her. Oh, so you've spoken to her. Mm -hmm. We FaceTime. She FaceTimes her granddaughter all the time, but we just haven't physically met. Wow. Have you ever asked her why? Why? I mean, I have. She's given me her reasons, and I'm like, you know, when you're ready and God permit it, it'll it, it happen. Yeah. I'm not going to rush you. Don't rush me, you know, but, you know, the the world has a weird way of aligning things and places. I did, thought I wasn't gonna see my brothers and sisters. But and how then. do you feel about this whole situation? Have you like forgiven? Did you have anything like hold her up for it? Did you? So the way I look at it, and most people say I'm crazy for it. Whatever happened with them, that's them. I don't have anything to do with it because I was a child. So right. I'm not gonna hold it against my dad. I'm not gonna hold it against my mom. 
That's y'all. Uh, I'm saying, how did y'all reconnect though? Uh, she found me on MySpace. Actually, my sister found me on MySpace, and she just kind of because she knew about us. you. Yeah, she just okay. kind of connected us from there. And then when we stopped using MySpace, Facebook came along, and then all the family just. We just start. But did friends. you know about them before that? Yeah, my dad never kept anything. He never away kept. From that's me. what I was wondering. My okay. dad would always tell me, you know, your mom's a beautiful person. She just had problems, and you know, it happened. So, wow, that's dope. Um, yeah, that that's that's life. Uh, you come from a dysfunctional family. Yeah, yeah. but then, which wait, most, wait, but which then, most but then functional <laughs> at the same time. Let yeah. me do my thing here. You know what I'm saying? You were dysfunctional, but functional. Within that dysfunction. Yeah. yeah, I go hard like that. Yeah, like you know that. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I went in right then. You know, that's a bar, nigga. Stop playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, with, with, but with dysfunction, if you learn how to overcome it, it permits growth. It does. You know what I mean? Because if you never have that, you're, you know, stagnant in yeah. life. But let's, let's just be real. Her dysfunction is not really on the level of dysfunctionality that others have to experience no, because she has it. a song with Big Bar- Mo at Bar-Wars. four years old, you know, five and six, she on the studio. <laughs> this is not the dysfunction that everybody else is experiencing. She's on songs with everybody. Her dysfunction, she just really dancing through, she dancing through her dysfunctionality. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, give me stuff to write about. <laughs> give me them great but songs to write about. But you gotta think about it though. In life, when we are going through issues, no matter what kind of dysfunction a person is going through, you always think that yours is the worst more than anybody else. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't really always scale it because even you didn't have your mom there and I know you had your grandmother. Yeah, my grandmother was like, my so mom. she replaced. So my grandmother, my dad's sister, they stepped in, and I didn't feel like I missed anything. Oh, okay. My my grandma used to always tell me, "You can't miss something you ain't never, never had. had." So as a kid growing up, seeing other kids with their moms, mom. it was like, "I got two. How y'all feel?" Oh, really? <laughs> I got my you know, my I'm God my shall supply like. all your needs according <laughs> to His riches and glory. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about nothing. No, he's was, already done it. Fine. Yeah, that's so that's good. the way it be. That's good. Um, I, I definitely, um, I, anybody would want to be you. I'm looking at your scale <laughs> of the artists that you've dealt with and all of the stuff that you have been able to accomplish over the years that yeah. you have, and a lot of people will never get to those levels in their career. And you say, well, how do you say that? Because you're on a lot of different songs that really really wrote history for us yeah i'm being real uh, like it's a lot of blitz. things yeah yeah correct so when i look at it it's a dope uh dope way to uh, grow up you Thank know you. but at the first time when you did that song at four years old um bar you baby did, it wasn't bar baby at four you what did renetta with Ronetta. your daddy oh yes. man um we fell in love with that song i ain't fell way. in love with the song i'm jealous yeah. as hell no he i'm like, jealous <laughs> i ain't did nothing with my daughter was, we was i'm thinking about what was. i ain't done really I, is she over there like oh that's so I sweet i'm over there like damn the i song. ain't do nothing like i wasn't supposed to <laughs> bro you must try to do a song nigga. right yeah i'm trying I love it. That song was a gift, and he just happened to have no choice but to take me to the studio. And while I was there, he was like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna come in here with Daddy and do some stuff?" Sure. And I oh, remember yeah. I had my little crayons and stuff because I would go to Skip Holman's studio, and I would sit in the corner and color. He lived in this huge house, like it was huge. And I just go bring all my colors and sit there and talk to the crayons and color. And he was like, "Put that down. I need you to come in the, in the booth and say something for me." Wow. And then I just started singing, like, if you can sing, I can sing. And they kept it. So I, it's actually two versions. It's one version of me just saying, Daddy, will you sing me a song, please? Mm-hmm. And that's it. And then it's another version. We heard me. that other version. We heard the other Run version. Oh, Daddy. Yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. one I love. I love that. Say, man, I was jealous as hell. Man, shout out to Ronnie Spencer for doing it right when <laughs> mm-hmm. I got it wrong as hell. I mean, oh. I ain't sang with no, you nobody. Still got time. No, nah, this girl, you seen a while ago. That's my baby girl. She finna go do her thing. She don't want to sing with Man, me. You'd be surprised. Once girl, she don't girl, wanna, man, she don't want to sing girl. with me. All they want is money. That's <laughs> all they want. <laughs> That's all they want. We done raised money. us. I don't know what the hell we done done. And deuces, they want to go hang out with their friends. They want to go do their own thing. Yeah, you she different, got dog. My baby, she, yeah, she hangs out just, with him. She just got her license, so she gone. Oh, bless y'all's heart. She yeah, got her license, she got a she car gone. and everything. I remember those days. But listen, man, Ronetta, you... Uh, but what I wanted to know, though, how did it feel when you heard yourself on wax after that after you did that like first time because did you just say on wax or, or what the hell yeah, do you it, think you it was right, she right it no, was no, I know it, but I'm just <laughs> tripping on the, 
what the hell going on, man? You've been reading books and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> don't do me. Don't I do me. I love my on. wife, man. She just go, yeah, so just throw that out there like this. You heard you say, Wax. How did it feel? I know you were really young, but um, it was kind of like, that's me. Like, you know, you just smile and look around like, I did that. That was me. Already. So that it, made you feel more yeah, motivated to feel, keep going. Like, this is really, oh, yeah, this is really what I'm going to do. You don't know what you just did. You just created a monster. <laughs> Ronetta is different. You're not the average young daughter, okay? No. So stop trying to, you know, y'all trying to create this regular narrative, but it's not. My I mean, daddy say I got a, one of them them old special souls. You got a different way about <laughs> yourself. I'm being real to do what she done at that early age like that. It's not something that every child is doing. Yeah, no. So, and it's great that he provided that, you know, that way, but it's it's God more mm -hmm. than anything, you know, the yeah. fact that that uh, that was uh, it's a God-given talent, and then the places you you were at was already wrote out by God. Yeah, kind of. Like so it was already me. written. Mm -hmm. And where you going? Yeah, yeah. All of it's been I'm done ready already. Too. I've been had my seatbelt on, and I'm just trusting God in the process. Hey, where I need to go. <laughs> so are you ready for when your daughter come to you and say, "Mommy, I want to sing"? Too? I can't wait. The day she says she want to sing, I'm retiring and I'm all hands in. <laughs> like it's Real no talent. longer about me no more. Like you, you want to do this? Let's go. Are you gonna be? As hard on her as your daddy was on you? I appreciate it. So definitely. Like yeah. then I didn't understand. But now that I'm older, I am so thankful he didn't let up. He didn't let up in, in anything. My education. He didn't let up nothing. Wow. Like I couldn't go to parties. We didn't know what that was. When I had my car, my curfew was like set, set. If It wasn't no streetlights. If you not at the house by nine o'clock, I'm taking the keys. I'm taking the car. I'm taking everything. I wish my daughter play. had it. I may need to impress her with those type of rules. He didn't, he didn't play. Like, I tried it one time. Came home at like 9.05. I was like, he ain't going to do nothing. Took my keys and went around the block and ran out of all my gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how you, like, you, you really, it's five minutes. Like, for real? Yeah. You going to back talk. I can make it worse. Wow. All right, I'm just go upstairs and I guess read a book. <laughs> right, so Ronnie was kind of tough on you. Yeah, he Man. still is. He still is. Yeah, I had to call him on my way here. He was like, you, you know, you, you be late, and it's Dallas. I say, yeah, Daddy, I know I'm, I'm gonna be a little late. Like, look, you should have left earlier. He said same thing. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> when I come to Houston, I'm gonna try to get you to hook that up. I want to interview him. I love. I bring him down here. He can come here too. It don't matter. He, you can. He you gonna can sleep the whole way, but yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> could have brought him today. Y'all playing? Oh, they going to the water park with the grandbaby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man, I, we we definitely. Um, I wanted to get back. I had we went out of town last night, and I wanted to get back for this cause. Yeah, because yeah, I wanted I to. I wanted this. to make sure you know. Uh, I, I I was excited about it. You know the history that you hold, the people that you've dealt with. It's just a dope setting. Um. I've met a lot of them. Some of them on that wall I right see, there. I see, boy, that wall um, impressive. Yeah, everybody <laughs> Most say that. Most people don't have that wall. Yeah, they that, say they do. But yeah, they don't. but that's just mm. a lot of time working. <laughs> that's me and her working, you know. That's good. That's um, a blessing. Yeah, just over the years. This, you see them little ones down there with T.I. when they was little, them same two you just met. Right beside the picture with Blackston. Oh. Look how little they are. They was Ooh. young, man. Where does time go? Time, time go fast. Time is rude. Take a lot of pictures of your daughter. To do a lot of videos. Videos. Time is. Yeah, my baby. My baby see a camera. She'll stop everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. I hope yeah. I got me a little model on my. Head. I was about to say. I was just about to ask because I know you did a little bit of modeling. Yeah. I hope so. so. She got her first fashion show in December, so we're gonna see. Oh, how so she you are putting her into it. Yeah, we're gonna see. That was, about, that was what you about to ask. Yeah. Her. Yes. What agency did you get her with? So she's not with an agency. She's a free agent right now. Um, most of my work when I first got started, I was a free agent until I wanted to get into more difficult shows. You got to have an agency. So shout out to Carnell because I was signed with some Nodge Model Management. Mm -hmm. um, he put me on one of his biggest shows, Fashion Beyond the Limits. So mm -hmm. kind of gave me the experience of like a really, really really big show see that's what i wanted to know because i'm like what's the benefits of having an agent compared to you know Man, being those big a shows new york fashion week los angeles fashion week because i mean most of them they don't most of those designers are impressed if you're with an agency if you're not they just look at you as you're unexperienced you don't know what mm. you're doing nine times out of ten you know exactly what you're doing you just 
don't want to be tied down and you don't want to have those stipulations and you don't want to get that five or 10, 15. Yeah, cent. I was about to say, yeah. But once you get in those big shows and you're getting that experience out there and that exposure, you know, take that 10%. I don't care. Somebody else big going to pick me too. So mm. yeah, I'm cool with it. I give it to you. You used to, okay. wa- you used to watch that on, uh, what, what was that? Top Real? Model? Yeah. Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks, them, they didn't want me. They said I was underweight. You went underweight. on there? Yeah, I was underweight. I was like 123 pounds. When and did you go time, on there? What year? I didn't know that. So I was 16 when I went. This is when they first like, started. Just really opened it up to the teenagers. She dissed you. She didn't diss me. So yeah, it's no, multiple. no, let's make it happen. <laughs> multiple. Yeah, yeah, she dissed It's them. multiple auditions that you have to go through before you even get, get to, to them. Get to them. I, I would imagine. And they were like, well, you have to look, but you're a little underweight. We need you a little, you know, we need you to kind of plump up just a little bit because of all the anorexia going on and all the girls that were going through the bulimia and stuff. They weren't messing with that. They didn't want that tied to that. And so I was like, I ain't crazy. anemic. I eat. Right. Yeah, I'd that's so crazy because y'all. Burger that day. I that. always thought that you know, with models, they want you as skinny as you can come. Now they want you thick. So mm. I'm just like, well, I mean, I eat, but it don't stick. So I don't know. And I had a baby, and, and a that baby is still on the way too. So, see, wow. a lot of people wish they could be you. I'm just like, well, like, oh well, fine. Don't take me. I use Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't stop you though. No, it didn't mm. stop you. So that's great. That's good. Because you started modeling at how old? Because it wasn't 15. in 15. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you my started accident. modeling before. Oh, tell and me that, the story. So that had nothing to do with my dad. My dad didn't even. Well, he, he spoke it into existence. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say it had something to do with him. Oh, but so he knew. My dad's sister, mm-hmm. my Aunt Rachel, um, she took me to HCC College for a casting call. Mm-hmm. And I modeled for their show every year. And then after that, she just got me more and more show. Oh, she was determined. You look thin thing. You finna walk these runways. She taught me how to do my makeup, my hair. She taught me all the necessities on becoming a model. My first big fashion show that I did with her, my first big fashion campaign was um, Italian Vogue. I was the mm. only black girl and I was dead in the middle. I had glue in my eye so my eye was all pink and she was squirting red eye in my eye she was like we ain't gonna mess this up and right got you in the middle. and i'm like okay but my mascara right but um yeah people she, don't understand with models how many oops they go through and they have to fix it and they have to walk hard. It. they have to keep walking like nothing is wrong their foot could be the ankle could I'll be wrong singing any day over modeling. modeling what's the most difficult situation you've hard. ever seen happen in modeling um, we had to do a um, bridal showcase at the George R. Convention Center downtown, and it was basically maybe 10 girls, 30 looks, and they had us coming back to back. I couldn't fit the shoes. So I'm a size eight and a half, nine. My foot was in a size seven and a half mm-hmm. shoe. The dress that I had on was two sizes too small. Mm-hmm. So I'm in this corset, could barely breathe, my aunt is looking at me like, you got it. Better not pass out. When you get to the stairs, you need to basically run to get to the next designer. And I fell down the stairs, sliced my leg open. Wow. And my auntie was like, I got it. We go patch it up and get patch going. Up. You good. Your next look is some pants. And I had graduation. Did she get day blood too. on anything? No. When I tell you she was a working art with that tape. <laughs> wow. Wow. And I almost missed graduation. So afterwards, we were running, and she was like, we got graduation. So I'm running. She was like, your hair and makeup's already done. I'm going to put my little dress on and stuff. We running down the parking lot. Wow, we that's finally dope. made it to graduation. Man, so who I know uh, that we that, – let's talk about Bar Baby a little let's bit. Let's go. I'm ready. Um, when you was okay, give me a spiel on that because I know I've, you've said it on other, but you ain't said it on my site. Let's you know, you ain't said it on my platform. I'm ready. So, um, just for our listeners, when you and Big Mo did that song, how did it? How to, for you? You were young, but how yeah. did how did it how did it happen in your eyesight? So I was six when it um act when we actually recorded the song, mm-hmm. and um, D Rec and Note D actually called my dad. Um, I was told that they were trying to use a sample couldn't find a sample so my dad ended up taking me to the studio I couldn't even reach the the uh, mic we had phone books I sat on top of the phone books I couldn't get the notes right so my daddy had to lay a dummy track and I had to listen to it like four or five times mm. and then my dad was like can you do it now yeah. Bye, baby. <laughs> and they was like yeah that's it baby girl that's it 
I ain't really paying no attention. I got down, got my Barbies, went and sat in the studio while they did whatever they did. Mm-hmm. When it hit was when I went home, and I don't know how they did this so fast compared to now how you got to get everything mixed and mastered Master, before yeah. you even. I got home, getting ready to get in the bed, go to school, and my daddy put on the radio, and he said, listen, you got this brand new joint by your very own Big Mo Bar Baby, Future Rondetta Spencer. It's the Bar Baby. And I'm like, <laughs> that yeah. quick. That you quick. So That's little. quick. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, how did they... Get now knowing happen. what I right. know, like it's processing steps, but they just show you how much power they had back then, back and then. how the ties were, and you know, put this on the put deck. that on there, yeah, get it so done. Get in I that got playlist. tired of listening to the song too. It got to a point where when we would get in the car to go to school, and I'd hear that, my granny, what did you do? <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Did your friends know it was you? No, because I went to a private school. Okay, so I went to a Christian private school. So. It- them kids didn't know nothing. They didn't know. No. They don't listen to that they type was of music. Kumbaya over there. They didn't. <laughs> they was trying to straight listen to whatever that. they were being told in that school. That's it. When I made the transition in third grade to go to public school, some of the kids knew. Yeah. But they didn't know it was me. And my daddy had instilled to me, don't tell nobody that shit. Keep it quiet. Wow. This is a public Privacy. school. Privacy. We don't know how these people are. Oh, you're talking about from yeah, private from public. to public. Yeah. Right. And then I went to middle school. Beverly Hills Intermediate, and this one guy named Ray Gonzalez wanted to play a game of Google. We Shout out, Google. Ray. We're going to Google our names. I wasn't thinking. I was like, all right, what we got free. do that? We got free, period. You want to Google people's names? Google. You didn't even know what would pop up? We Googled everybody's name, got to mine, probably third to last, and it popped up. Ronetta Spencer, Bar Babies. I was like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. What did they say when they seen What it? did your friends say? I didn't have a cell phone. I wasn't allowed to have a cell phone in school. So my daddy said the only person you need to call was me, and if you need to call me, go to the principal's office. So they got their razors, right, and they texting people. And I'm like, what are y'all, you know, like, what are y'all doing? Ray was like, why you didn't tell us? Well, my daddy told me not to tell y'all. I get called down to the office. Oh, you got called to the office for this? I got called this? down to the office. It, the word spread that quickly. It spread, uh, it spread quick enough to get to my daddy's phone. I Ooh. got called down to the office. I get down there. My dad and my grandmother. My daddy looking at me like. You <laughs> was about what, 10, 11, 12? I was about 11 or 12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He looking like, what did I like? What did I tell you? It's not that hard to keep your mouth shut. And I'm trying to explain to him like, it's not my fault. It was Ray. And he like, who was Ray? <laughs> I, he Googled it. And then my grandmother was like, technology. You can't stop that. Right. right. Yeah. So he was like, uh, well, we're going to have to have a talk with the teachers. We had a talk with the teachers. Kids treated me okay. I got a little special treatment, you know, but for the most part, <laughs> kids, they treated me fine. Now, when I got to high school, it was a whole different ball game. When you I got to Miss Popularity? School, he was in high school. Oh, this me. nigga. Oh, is y'all. <laughs> that nigga, high school sweetheart. Uh, this nigga, man. Out Did of he nowhere. ignore you? Out no, of nowhere. No, he was my crush. He had a girlfriend, so he oh. was my crush. Oh, that nigga cheetah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I was, a ner- I was nerdy. Like, okay. I had the glasses, and oh. then I transitioned into contacts my junior year and all that stuff. So when I would see him, it was kind of like, that's him. You know, to yeah. my friends. Yeah. And they'd be like, he got a girlfriend. I'm like, that's him, no. But um, what wow. I would say what junior year, senior year, people really started finding out? <sighs> they didn't, you, you said that's that girl that was on the big mo. What, how did, what did she they, was how, on that how song? How did they react? What Man, did they do? High school was a trip. I went did you get any bullying? To no. Somebody. You no, know, it was cool with everybody. Some, okay. You had the people that didn't like me. I didn't really care. You had the ones that was the non-believers. Didn't really care either. Then you had the ones that were in the music industry that knew, that recorded at my daddy's studio. It yeah. was like, nah, you good, we got you, no worries. Then you had just the ones that wanted to just say, hey, I sat with her, or I took a picture with yeah. her. But I was cool with everybody. I didn't have any problems. Um, I wasn't a problem child, because my daddy didn't have a problem coming up to the school, my yeah. auntie didn't either. But in high school, it was just kind of like, you seen Bar Baby. They treated me like a celebrity, but it was kind of like, oh, she cool. Renetta, yeah, she cool. She sing, too. I wanted talent shows. Wow. So 
So I mean, they would they would show mad love, like North Shore show mad love on talent shows. I get up there and do my little, you know, I, I sing Shaka Khan. Hey. So I get up there to the fire, you know, yeah, my yeah, song yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. and they rock with me. The teachers rock with me. But um, high school was okay. Middle school just kind of scared me because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to get in trouble by mm-hmm. running. Sorry, Dad, I called you by your first name. But. <laughs> Let me ask you, so, so when, when, when Big Mo died, uh, how was that? How was, and, well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about you getting older and him still, you know, you and him having that relationship. What, what was that like? Um, I would get calls. Um, they kept in touch with my grandmother a lot. So I would get calls, um, making sure that those grades never dropped. Or, you know, if your grades drop, you're going to have a problem with all of us. Yeah. And that just wasn't from Mo. That was from all of them. Like all of them. Like who? Uncle Screw. Well, Uncle Screw used to pop up at my elementary sometimes. He was my cousin's godfather. Okay. Wow. So he was family too. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he wants these money. You better keep them grades above, mm-hmm. you know, above average. I'm letting you slide with an A minus, but baby girl, education is key. Okay, Uncle Screw. And you grades drop. You can't come to the house no more. You can't be doing none of that no more until you get your grades. And it was the same thing with all of them. Um, my Uncle D-Rec was the same way with um, CEO of Rec Shop. He Rec was, Shop. Them boys went hard. Yeah. Progress reports and report cards was mandatory. Wow. Did you get paid? I to keep. I did. As I was about to say, did I you get did. paid for that report card? Um, I'm still paying to this day. <laughs> They let me slide with B minuses, but if it was a C on there, we had a serious talk, and like sometimes I couldn't go to the studio, but until I brought it up, because there was no reason I should have it. But it, it was either you talking too much or you lollygagging, because you smart enough. Mm-hmm. So why is it like this? See, yeah. in our house, you have to have A, all A's, or else you're not getting paid. Oh yeah, my, <laughs> you can't get um, paid. When I transitioned, because I went to go and live with my aunt, because the schools over there were like better, better. So mm-hmm. my daddy was like, you, you know, you gonna go over there after my grandmother passed away. And you know you gonna. Ramp my it up. auntie was known for you graduating, going to college, getting a good paying job. <laughs> she was known for that. All the nieces and nephews went to her house. If they didn't go to her house, they ain't they ain't where they should be. Wow. Mm. Sorry if y'all watching. So but did it's you? The truth. Y'all know it's the truth. <laughs> did, okay, but when you got older, from and I'm looking at it from four or six all the way up to now, thirteen, fifteen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big Mo still, he's he alive, alive at this time. Mm-hmm. What, what so I'm just trying to understand. Do? Huh? No, the bar baby, I'm talking about the song. Still doing the, okay. I'm thinking about how she transitioned to being an older uh, teen from being that little girl and still having, it was that, hard. having that relationship with Big Mo with and, Big and, and Rick Shop and all those guys. Um, It, it was you hard. You said it was hard. Yeah, because, I mean, Rick Shop, you know, they, they all did their separate things at one point in life. So, I mean, everybody was solo at one point and yeah then, you know it wasn't a group so i couldn't just call one and they all in the same room recording again so i had to call mm-hmm. separately mm-hmm. but um i i would still talk to mama mo i still talk to mama mo to, to this, this day, day. Mm-hmm. Um, i actually spoke with her not too long ago at exotic pop um i spoke with mo a lot if they had shows i was incorporated if i couldn't go then you know they let me know, oh, this is not the spot for you. You know, mm-hmm. can't come to this one, but it's going to be another one next time. Any big arenas, though, I was always incorporated. They wow. always called me. So when he passed, um, I was actually at school, and I came home. He was um, already sick. Yeah, my grandmother was in tears. She yeah. said, I got to figure out how to tell your daddy, because my dad was incarcerated at the time. Wow. Mm-hmm. She said, I got to figure out how to tell your dad. I was like, tell him what? She said, well, Mo passed away. Wow. I say, which one? Big Mo? Wow. She say, yeah, I just got the call. So she said, I'm going to try to go down there and tell your dad. She say, but uh, my fear is he already know. The my word get was, around. Yeah, my dad was incarcerated when Pimp died. So yeah. it hit him hard, too. Wow. So she say, well, I'm going to leave you with your aunt. Just go down there and have a talk with him and see. And when she came back, she said, yeah, it took a, t- it took a toll on him. He just didn't believe it. Yeah. And I say, yeah, Granny, you know, I understand, well, you know, pimp, and then now, you know, Mo, I, I understand. It's hard to deal with when you lose somebody when you're incarcerated. Like, yeah. I, you I can't mean, do anything can't about do anything it. Yeah, I, I got locked up six months after my mom passed, but my best friend died when I was locked up, so I get it. Um, you just, you, you, you have to deal with it, but you're so focused on the world you're in that's surrounding you, you can't really right. grieve like that. So you have to be... 
strong. You, you have, have to be, be strong. yeah, because it's always it's somebody like around you. Your job you. outside to be strong. Correct. Form too, even Period. though you don't really know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. So, but then you know you you basically you was able to go to the funeral and all that stuff. She didn't let me go. She didn't let you go. Really? How old um, were you? I think I was. 13 13 because okay. my grandmother passed and i was 14 like right after mo wow mm -hmm. the one that um, didn't let you go yeah she told me she was like I, i'm not letting you go to this she said this is just something i don't think you should go to even though you seen you can be okay that's like family i'm not we're not doing and you say, wanted so. to go or you i did i wanted to go i was like no i think i should go like i feel like i should be there you know just to pay my respects mm -hmm. and she was like no i think this is she said one that's the bar baby you know and you you sing that i don't know how these people gonna react Act, yeah. she mm. said, you, i don't want you there yeah i get it so I my cousin it. actually went for us because at the time my grandmother was having health issues so she didn't go either she didn't go either Whoa. so he went and he came back and told her he said man they put him away nice everything was purple it was it was nice and she said that's that's how it should be done wow so um man that was a special dude. Dude, did now ESG. Hold on, before you get into uh -huh. that, what I want to know is, after Bar Baby, um, between the age of six till oh, what music? 13, 14, did you do any music in yeah, between that? I that? did. I did another song um, called Rich Girl with Toe Down. You're a rich girl and you've gone too far. And oh, it played on the radio so much. And to, I did the same thing. I was like, man, <laughs> we had it in top. So it was in the top 10. Then it went from top ten to top five. Then it went from top five to top three. So they was playing it every every hour. It felt like, and I was like, man, I'm tired of hearing this song. I don't want to hear it no more. Wow. I cut it off. She was like, girl, no, I'm supporting. And you don't know they might count these radio plays to your mm -hmm. ass cap. That time I know ass cap was. <laughs> I said, man, I don't want to listen to this granny ass. I don't want to cut it off. But I mean, wow. And shout out to Toe Down because I was on that song with Toe Down. And how old so, were you when you did that one? Um, I recorded that one at 10, and I think they at released 10. it like around 11 or 12. Wow. And what's the next song you did after that? Um, I did It's All Gravy. And it was just um, a hook with my Uncle Noak. He's like, I just need you to come in and say, It's All Gravy. Did It's All Gravy, and then I was like, Uncle Noak, I hear something else. Can I put it? If I don't like it, I'll take it off. But yeah, put it. Put it, ended up keeping it. It wasn't until years later. When I say years, I think I was like 20, and I was Googling myself, right? <laughs> and I looked up It's All Gravy, and it's got Bum B on there. Wow. Ah. Never knew. Wow. So what else did you put on there other than It's All Gravy? Um, I come through slinging, riding drop tops with my 15s banging, and it's all gravy. Riding through the hood, looking good, working for it like a real player should, and it's all gravy. You did all of that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And how old were you there? I was like 10. Okay, so you wow. did that back to back with the other one and that one. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. And then after that, it was just everything kind of stopped. Once my dad left, my grandmother passed. My aunt was like, "I just really want you to take this time and get your education." Yeah, it's new. and that's fourteen. How how long was your dad gone? My dad was gone five years. Okay, I talked to him every day and seen him every weekend. Okay, like. We didn't, took have, you down yeah, there. we didn't have plans. My aunt yeah, he had to be down there in Huntsville. Beaumont. Oh, Beaumont. Mm -hmm. which is still How close. far was that? <clears throat> still close. Okay. So we live Channel View, so it was super close. Yeah. To okay. Us. So that's not bad. And um, Daddy did concerts down there. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah. They yeah. do concerts yeah, in yeah. yeah, you can get out. You can get out. Yeah. Daddy still did what he was doing yeah. down there. Yeah. He sang when. It was funny when we were going to see him and he'd walk in, everybody be like, Ronnie, sing us a song while in visitation. And the warden would let him. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead and sing a song. Did he write you any songs and sing to you and say, hey, baby, no. I want you to sing this? No, it was vice versa. Oh. He would tell me when I get out, I want you to write me an album. Did you? So I had a book, and I don't think he understood the extent of how much I was writing. I had a book called The Book of Secrets. It had 250 pages in there. I wrote front and back songs. And I still had that book, and we still go to that book to this day, and I rip out a song and be like, Daddy, do that one. Or Daddy, here, I like that one. That song, try that one. Did he ever look through your whole book? Yeah, see? he has the book. I've never got the book back. Wow. And I've asked for it, but. <laughs> do you remember some of the songs? Some of them I do. Um, some of them is kind of like, I wrote this? <laughs> like me? All right. Cool. 
And he's recorded a lot of them, actually. Really? Like his um, last album, majority of the songs were songs that I wrote. Wow. wow. Love it. That's cool. So are you, um, so let's get to ESG now. That's my okay. guy right there. Yeah, I, uh, I only do Big Tony, but that, mm-hmm. that, but me and him, we he follows me. We 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 talk back and forth. First, he wouldn't say nothing. Then I hit the nigga with the truth, nigga. I'm I'm such and such, and he's like, oh man, tell such. A, it, it changes. Yeah. It. We know the same people, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, it's everything's written. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like it, I don't th- I don't think people know the extent of that. I'm a believer in God, so yeah. I just just know that God's the one that's orchestrating everything. So. If I ask Definitely. for it, it's happening anyway. People don't realize because no that's it's my that guy. Manifestation. Meaning God, that's my guy. So he he gonna make it happen for me. You See, know what I mean? Me. I mean God got an <laughs> understanding. So, so, you know, he so got yeah. Me. But ESG is a, a dope. Hey man, that guy there, man. I listen to him just like Pimp C. Now, uh, you know, because he, he started early and uh, um, just uh, how, just give me a little bit about how you guys. How, I know you call him Uncle E. Uncle E. Well, I'm Uncle E too now, so stop playing. <laughs> but let's get it popping though. Just just talk about it for a minute. Um, he ain't cut me no slack either. He still don't. Sometimes he give me a hard time, but for the most part, he he just E. Like you never know what you're gonna get with him. The creativity is oh, the creativity is ridiculous with him. And the studio is ridiculous because he freestyles. Yeah. He when doesn't he, write. When he does write, it's even more lethal than a a freestyle. But just to be in there, him, Southside still holding. All right, I got it. All hmm. you said was Southside still holding. How you got it? How the rest you, of the song. What? Where is the rest of it? Let me it? tell you something. Like, that's it? That that's dude dope, man. He come down here, he got in my cousin closet. He don't even realize it. Zeke, uh, Young Zeke, that's my first cousin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a song with Young Zeke and Zola, Solo. Solo brought Shout it down. Solo. Solo was just you don't on know, here. No, not, no, not that solo. Not, not, not solo. Not solo. My, solo <laughs> my solo got shot four times. He got killed, but he used oh, to be, uh, this was, you was probably about eight. You might have been by that. You might have been eight or seven <laughs> when this happened. Now. But at any rate, he was, uh, ESG came up and he got him a cousin closet over there in North Dallas and did a mm-hmm. song for him. They oh. both did it together. They Zeke had to, you know, everybody's studio was in the closet. Y'all don't realize that. Yeah, yeah at first people start out in the closet, nigga. And uh, but but yeah, well, I man. I've been in some closets. The whole <laughs> time, right? yeah. We went to one studio. <laughs> My daddy said, it's a, "Baby, it's a little different." Daddy apologized. I said, "What's wrong? Well, you gonna record in the bathroom." <laughs> The but isn't that echo if you're in the bathroom recording? Man, they had so many sheets and pillows. Yeah, and they trying to get that sound right. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. The song was good, though. Yeah, <laughs> but ESG is, is dope. He used to go down and do parties. He used to go down every, at least once a, every other year or so for Big Tony and do uh, uh, his birthday uh, mm-hmm. party for him. And that's that's my guy. Like, Tony, like, he come up under me. So, yeah. you know, um it was dope to have that relationship through them because this yeah. my guy. But at the end of the day, I like though I, I love this music. I, I'm a Pimp C fan though. I'm gonna be real. Oh, with I you. know. But mm-hmm. but I rock with ESG. <laughs> too, I know, though. man. But, e a character. He, he called him the Devontae's. Oh mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So the first time I brought him around, I was like, look, I got many uncles. Okay, they ain't, <laughs> they they around. They everywhere. And uh, he said, "Who is this you got with him?" <laughs> he said, "Who is this you got with you?" I say this my um this my this my husband. Yo who? I say I got married. What's your name? So my husband say Devontae. Ah, he cool. I like them Devontae's. Them Devontae's the same. <laughs> <laughs> I say what? <laughs> he didn't ask him to sing. No. I got like, like you good. You cool, homie. You good. Uh, so every time we go to a show, he'll see me and he'll walk past me to go and speak to him. And I'm just like, if it what? All right. <laughs> All right. So did so did you and him got music together? Yes. What do y'all did, got, explain it to me? So we did a song called So Southside. And, okay. Um, that was an accident too. I always end up on songs by accident. Wow. So I went to the studio. There's with nothing solo. happens by accident. Well, there you. You know what? It's You're right. It was predestined. It's written, it was right? Predestined. Yes. I walked in the studio. I was getting on a um album with Sean Solo called Waterworld. And he played this song. He was like, this is going to be the single. And he played it. Dun, 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 dun. I said, oh, this jam. So I started, I, I, I. So he looked. She dope. 
I love her voice. He that said, I'm going to just play it and go with it. So I say, me and E about to let them know. Mm-hmm. How to switch lanes, how to swing on vols, how to swing on vols. And I'm so south side, south side. Go record it. Woo, that went down, <laughs> man. Said, I'm, right. in, I'm enjoying it right now, though. So we went. I got the concert <laughs> going right here now, nigga. I went in and I laid it. Now, Solo have a thing because I don't use my hands when I'm in the booth. I put my hands in my pocket. Really? I, I can't help it. It's but just, then, yeah. It's a habit. So when I'm in the booth, right here, you doing all I of this. I got one, one ear off and I'm hands in pocket and I don't move. I'm just singing. And he asked me, say, we got to do another video because you ain't acting right. I said, what you mean? You your hands in your pocket. I said, yeah, it was just comfortable. I needed somewhere to put them. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, my hands are always in my pocket. When I'm, and you know, E told me that too. You always got your hands in your pocket. I said, yeah, that, that means this song going to be good. Because he always said I got my hands in my pocket. So this song going to be a good song. I'm going to keep my hands in my pocket. Wow. So you still do that even today? To this day. Wow. Um, it's, Except for when I'm on stage. When I'm on stage, I'm a completely different person. Half the time, I don't know... Um, what comes over me but my daddy always say you it's get a on character. stage you better use everything I taught you you better take the dance class everything you better use it all so